In April 2014, this year, Windows XP reaches its end of life. That being said, you're either going to have to do one of two things. One, you're going to have to buy a new computer. Or two, you're going to need to find a replacement operating system. I have the answer for you right here. We are looking at the release candidate of Zorin OS 8. And this distribution aims to ease your transition over from Windows or another operating system over to Linux. And we're going to have a look at that right now on Spatry's Cup of Linux. The one thing I really love about Zorin OS is that this is a magnificent distribution for beginners. Even when I was new at Linux, I tried this out and I enjoyed it so much that I actually supported the project and got a copy of their Ultimate Edition to get their additional features that, of course, you could get free uh, if you were to do a little bit of digging around online. I did a little bit of modification to this. Uh, for starters, I moved the panel from the bottom of the screen up to the top. But that's something that most Windows users can do if they wanted to. They can move their taskbar to the left, to the right, to the top, and the bottom. And I prefer to have it up at the top of the screen. Easier for me to do uh, my presentation with this. So if you look at your upper right corner of the screen, let's get started. You'll see there's a little gear here. And when you click on this, uh, you can get information about the computer. This is where you can go for Zorin OS help. Your system settings are easily found here. You can lock your screen. You can uh, choose a guest session or uh, a user session. Log out, suspend, restart, and shut down. Clicking on the uh, clock here will open up your calendar where you can add events. You can also change your date and time settings. You have a volume control. This also comes with a program called Music. And when you have any of your uh, audio or video titles playing, you can control them here. And of course, you can adjust your sound settings right here. Battery indicator for those of you who are on laptop. And this will also allow you to manage your power settings. You can uh, set your, uh, your availability, whether you're available or away, that sort of thing. You have your internet connectivity here, whether Wi-Fi or wired, you can manage that here. And then, of course, your language settings. Uh, for me, that default is English, U.S. As we go to the upper left part of the screen, you'll see that we have a quick launch to music. This will manage all of your music files that you have on your system. You have a quick launch to your file manager, which is the same thing here where the home icon is. And, of course, the trash can like you would see on a Windows desktop. Your files can be uh, accessed and managed here, and this is using a program called Nautilus. Okay, and you'll see there are some pretty cool little screen effects going on here. I uh, enabled the wobbly windows. This is not enabled by default on this, but you can manage uh, everything from right here. You also get Chrome browser. So we're in OS 8 comes with some improvements and basically this is just a just to give you a taste of what is to come because this is a release candidate but basically they've updated their software for this they've included a uh, a new a music player app that i just described here and then of course they've included empathy but something i've never seen before they have the zorin uh theme changer and currently there's only two included with this a light and a dark theme but it's my hope that we'll actually see more coming uh, as the uh, new version releases the panel that you're seeing on the top of the screen is called avant window navigator and if you don't like the way that the panel looks you can change this easily let me show you what i mean just by right clicking on the panel and going into preferences you receive this dialog here Okay, and uh, you can change uh, the size of the icons. I made them a little bit smaller. Uh, normally, uh, they have them a little bit larger. Just by uh, rolling this wheel up, you'll see the icons change their sizes. So you can customize uh, how this appears. You can define where this panel will appear on your screen. You can choose the style. This current style is called Lucindo. You have a task management uh, preferences available. Uh, 
you have a bunch of applets that you can add to this thing and that's done here and this also includes dock bar x which provides you with uh, the ability to uh, see you know miniature image or preview of what you have open similar to what you would see in windows 7 and uh, a bunch of little applets and if there's something you want to add it's just as simple as you know, um, hmm, let's pick one out here. Let's say I want to put a to-do list. I can just drag this and place it wherever I want it here. And now you'll see we've got the little to-do list uh, icon here. In themes, this is where you'll see there are a number of themes that already come preloaded with this. So if you don't like this look, you can change it to one of these. And even if that doesn't uh, fit your needs and you want to colorize them, you can do all of that here by picking out different colors and uh, different settings. And I even have a tutorial on my channel in my Pin Guy OS How To playlist that tells you how to tweak this thing to your heart's content. And then, of course, some other advanced settings uh, for the placement of icons and that sort of thing come loaded with this. Right clicking on your desktop and changing desktop background uh, will allow you to choose from a number of really cool wallpapers just by clicking on that background. You will see they've included a number of them here and since we do have a light background maybe having a light uh, colored uh, desktop would be okay. Not a whole lot but a good little selection of them. I think I'll, I'll pick this one. We'll choose select and then it's done right there on the spot. You can also choose colors, gradients, and that sort of thing. Going into all settings here will take you into your system settings, which is also easily accessible from here. As I had talked about, by clicking the gear and then going into system settings, this will open it up where you can change your background, your brightness, language support, everything you need to do, tweak your system is located here. Zorin OS by default has four desktops to switch from. And to switch between them, it's really easy. So you'll see I've got a number of applications open up here by clicking the middle mouse button on the desktop. You can rotate the cube and navigate your desktops this way. But they also have an expo mode by pressing the super key on your keyboard or the window key that you see and then pressing S then you have access to these desktops and you can click a window here and position these windows wherever you want. To manage those effects, you just simply type in CC SM for the Compiz Config Settings Manager and you have a plethora of effects that you can adjust here. There's the wobbly windows effect, the 3D windows effect. Uh, it didn't like it here, but maybe I don't have strong graphics acceleration here so uh, yeah oh and interestingly enough kids this operating system only uses 450 megs of RAM how cool is that so you could run this on an older computer and as long as you have a supported graphics accelerator you will be able to do all of this stuff on this this is cool stuff indeed and if you want to know more about uh, comp his and all the effects that you can do on this definitely check out my channel because I have a comprehensive uh, tutorial on all the things that you can do with this a number of accessories to get the most out of the system you get an archive manager a calculator character map you can manage your disks your files a font viewer you can take a screenshot in case you get an error and you're going online for help you can show somebody the screenshot of your error you know uh, you can search for files there is a terminal and of course a text editor and the nice thing about this this distribution is easy enough to use that most people will probably never ever have to use a terminal uh, you have a few games included with this, but for those of you who like Steam, you'll probably want to go into the software center to download that. A few graphics tools come preloaded with this, a document viewer, the GIMP, uh, an image viewer, shot well for managing photos, and simple scan. In internet, you get desktop sharing, empathy instant messaging, and I believe empathy will pretty much connect to most instant messaging services out there. Google Chrome comes preloaded with this. You get the Remina Remote Desktop Thunderbird Mail. And let's say you don't like Chrome. Well, Zorin has the Web Browser Manager. If you click on this, it will ask you for your password because uh, you will be installing software. And anytime you install software in Linux, you will 
uh, need to enter a password. But you can uh, choose which web browser you want, whether it's Firefox, Google Chrome, Opera, or Midori. And for those of you who love lightweight software, Midori is an excellent option. So just by clicking one of these buttons, you can uninstall and uninstall the browser of your choice very quickly, very easily. You get the full LibreOffice suite included with this. In sound and video, you get a number of really cool tools here. Brazero for burning your CDs and DVDs. You get the Cheese Webcam Booth. Music, which is a simple program for managing all of your music and MP3s and audio files. You get the OpenShot Video Editor, which is a great entry-level video editor, similar to Windows Movie Maker, although I think this has a few more features than Movie Maker, and it does a lot more. You get a sound recorder, and then of course a video player. In System Tools, you get a number of other applications, and some of these open into submenus under administration. This is where you can uh, manage uh, your partitions using Gparted. You get access to the software center and this is the Ubuntu software center that comes with this. You get the software updater. Now this will pop up automatically if it detects that there is an update that is available for your system and allow you to run those updates. As a matter of fact, as soon as I installed this, I had some updates to install immediately. You have a startup disk creator. Uh, the Synaptic Package Manager comes with this as well. System testing and then Windows wireless drivers. Great for those of you who have Wi-Fi interfaces that you just cannot find a Linux driver for or there's no kernel support for your Wi-Fi interface. This program will let you install a Windows driver to get your Wi-Fi working. I tried it out myself the other day and I was amazed at how well it works. You also have preferences available. And here you have an activity log manager, the Compiz config settings manager that I showed you earlier, your desktop sharing disks, your input methods. Uh, you have a tweak too. And then of course, because this is Ubuntu based, you have access to Ubuntu One where you can store, where you can store files in the cloud. And then of course you have startup application management as well so that you can turn off uh, features that you're not even using. You also get a disk usage analyzer. You uh, have power statistics, your system log, a system monitor. And uh, this is a cool little utility here. This is uh, like a task manager as well, if you will. Uh, it tells you what your resources are. It, it says I'm using 454, 455 megs of RAM uh, on two CPUs here. So very nice. Okay, and then it shows you your file systems as well. We've already had a look at the system settings. You have the Zorin Look Changer. And this program is really nice because now you can give this a kind of look and feel that you want. And uh, you can choose between a Windows 7 look and feel, a Windows XP look, or if you want to go with the GNOME 2 where you have a panel at the top and the bottom of the screen. So. There are plenty of options here for you. And then, of course, in this menu as well, we have the Zorin Theme Changer. And currently, there's only two choices. You can choose a light theme or a dark theme. Personally, I like the dark theme. So let's go ahead and have a look at this. And it automatically changes it to the dark appearance. And I think it looks quite nice, actually. Maybe too much for some people. Some people may prefer uh, a lighter desktop. So two choices for now. But... I hope that they will be including more choices uh, as this matures. Zorin OS also comes with Onboard, which is an on-screen keyboard for accessibility, and of course they have a screen reader available as well. Do you have any really old Windows programs that won't run in Windows 7 or Windows 8? Maybe you should try running them in Wine, but it doesn't run everything they've included the tool to make it easier for you. This has Wine installed, but it has Play on Linux installed as well, which will allow you run several different versions of Wine on the same computer so that you can 
get better compatibility with some of those Windows applications and games. And I highly recommend this when uh, you are new to Linux and you're trying to get Windows applications running on top of it. And because this is a compatibility layer and not an emulator, you can expect the same level of performance of your Windows programs and games that you would on a native Windows install. You also get the Software Center, as I mentioned earlier. And in the Software Center, this will allow you to find just about any application that you could possibly want to run. And if there is an application that this comes pre-installed with, you can remove that application and switch it out for something else. And that is the beauty of free and open source software, because there are so many choices available to you. And everything is neatly laid out here. So if you know you're looking for maybe some books and magazines, they have a number of them listed here. And obviously, I think because of the color theme that I'm using here, uh, it's not showing the text. So I kind of have to, you know, switch back to the light color theme. Dark color themes don't always play uh, very well with these GTK applications. So let's go back into the system tools. We're going to go back into the theme changer and let's swap that back to a light color. But you're going to see there are a number of magazines that this comes uh, preloaded with. And that was just uh, an example. If you want to get your game on, there are a number of games available. Most of them free. Some of them you might want to shell out a few coins for. But if you're going to shell out a few coins, you might want to consider installing Steam. It's right here in the repository, ready for you to install. And of course, hitting up the Humble Bundles is not a bad idea either because they issue Steam keys that you can redeem on Steam and uh, install and play. But arcade games, board games, card games, puzzles, and all that other stuff. I love playing games. I love getting my game on. And Linux is an awesome platform for gaming. Internet tools out the wazoo. Uh, so you've got your FTP clients. If you want to, uh, if you want to watch uh, what what's coming in and going out on your system, uh, where the internet is concerned, Wireshark is an awesome tool for that. Uh, great for those of you who might want to capture uh, streaming media on your system. You have a plethora of uh, sound and video tools. So if you don't like uh, the uh, default video editor. There are other choices available to you. You have Kazam here, for instance, that you could install for capturing your screen and that sort of thing. So lots of goodness here. You also have quick access to your places, your file system, your home folder, computer, network, and trash. And then, of course, a bunch of quick links right here. And I believe this program is called Gano Menu, but Zorin has actually done a lot of tweaking to this, and they kind of made it you know, their own in-house menu system. So, at the end of the day, Zorin OS is a magnificent replacement for Windows XP and Windows 7. It is a complete desktop operating system that contains most software that the average user would require. It has a foundation for installing your Windows applications and games. But for Windows applications you are unable to get working, Odds are, you're going to be able to find a Linux replacement in the Software Center. All I can say to RTM Zorim and his team, excellent job! And as a reminder, please consider supporting the show hosts that are bringing you the content that you enjoy the most by disabling your ad blockers or shouting some coins. Peace out!